this video is going to be slightly different and for that we will be solving this very dumb question valid parenthesis which is asked in very dumb interviews by dumb companies like i don't want to take names but maybe those dumb fan companies or something we will be implementing the stack data structure and in a way solving this question to know whether our data structure implementation is correct or not let's get started so in this problem we have a string the string may contain all these weird brackets the opening bracket and the corresponding closing bracket. So we have three conditions. An input string is valid if open brackets must be closed by the same type of bracket. So for every opening bracket, there must be a corresponding closing bracket and open brackets must be closed in the correct order. So we can only close a bracket if we find its corresponding closing bracket and nothing else. Every closed bracket has a corresponding open bracket of the same type. So obviously, if we just look at the test cases below, if you look at the second example, we can see that the opening bracket has the same kind of closing bracket. Similarly, the second opening bracket, which is the square opening bracket at the third position, has a closing bracket of the same type. Similarly, this curly bracket has a closing curly bracket. If you look at example three, you can see that the brackets don't match. Hence, this is not a valid string. Let us get started. We will code the stack data structure first. There might be some libraries in Go, but I'm not that much aware of it. So we will code our own data structure from scratch. First of all, I will just define the stack interface. This is the interface that will be implemented by our data structure stack. And if you have seen my previous video, I think it's a good programming practice to define interfaces for dependency injection. Also. So the stack interface contains the four important methods. The first one is empty, which returns a Boolean indicating whether the stack is empty or not. The second method is pop, which gives us the very top of the stack, which is a byte. Then we have pop, which pops the topmost element from the stack. And then we have this push method, which takes a byte and adds it to the stack or pushes it on top of the stack. Before going ahead further, I would take some time to clarify that what is the stack data structure actually. If you just look at the image here, a stack is a simple data structure. In fact, it is very simple and very useful. So a stack can be in the empty state. When it is in the empty state, the top points to minus one. There is nothing in this stack. It's empty. Now let's try pushing an element 10 into the stack. If we push the element, we can see that now the stack has a single element, which is the integer 10 and the top points to the very first index. It points to 10. If we push another element 20, it will be pushed on top of 10. So now our stack has two elements out of which the top most element is 20 because that is the one that we pushed last and now top points to 20. Now when we try to pop something from the the stack the topmost element is popped off and we can see that the stack again has a single element which is 10 uh, the same state it was in before before we pushed the element 20 so pushing any element into the stack just adds the element on top of the previous one and the top points to the new one so this way the stack keeps going up and when we want to pop something it takes off the topmost element from the stack and the size of the stack decreases some of the examples of stack is in the virtual machines for example so if you think about all these functions that are executed in the programs that you write, they are actually pushed onto the stack and they are executed in that order. So let's say that there is a function A which calls a function B. So the function B would be pushed onto stack and if it calls another function C, it will be pushed again. And in the end, this function C would be called because it is on top of the stack. Then C is removed and then B is called and similarly after that A is called. And not even this, but even if you have like complex operations involving like, let's say a very large expression with proper bracket, division, multiplication, that operation can be also performed using stack. So the calculator actually implements stack to perform all these operations. And even if you think about web browsers, when you click on a link, you go to that link and on that page, let's say that you click on another link and then you reach to that page. Now, when you try to do this back, the web browser remembers that this is the last link that we came from. So it will just go to that link so if you think about it we are just pushing links onto one another on top of the stack and when we visit that link and when we click the back button that link is actually popped out of the stack so this is a simple explanation of how stack works there are many good tutorials on youtube you can look into to understand more about the data structure but it is not that complicated to be honest let's get started with the code again so as we saw that our stack interface has four major operations empty top pop and push i could have defined using some generics but 
for now let's keep it simple and define byte because the the question that we have here has expressions which are simply byte and nothing else i mean these brackets are simply bytes like a byte array so our stack is just an array of bytes in this case so that's what i will define here now after that uh let's define the functions on the stack so the very first function is empty which returns a boolean indicating whether the stack is empty or not so if the stack is nil or if it is not nil and the length is zero then in that case we can safely assume that our stack is empty note that i am using s equals nil here as the first condition because i don't want to dereference a, a nil pointer in the latter case where i'm dereferencing it and calculating the length so this is how we will implement the empty function now let's go ahead and define the top function so similarly if the stack is nil then we will handle this case but for now i am thinking that we don't need to handle it because we are obviously aware of all these functions and we can implement the checks at the topmost level so we are not handling that check as of now so let's ignore it because it will keep our code base simple but in production if you're writing something like this you must handle all the edge cases but here since i know that i won't be calling this top function if the stack is empty so i'm not implementing it here for now now i will just convert this stack into a byte array and what i will do is i will be returning the last element of this whole array so whenever we push something onto the stack it is just appended so the push operation is actually an o1 operation and similarly the pop operation is also an o1 operation so that's the beauty here so now in golang the arrays are actually defined in the same way if we push or append something to the array it is appended in the last and if we want to pop something we can also remove something from the very last without changing the array so the operation is one in both the cases so that is why in case of top i'm just returning the last element which is the topmost element of the stack that we are building now in case of pop operation if the stack is empty then we return false because we cannot pop anything from the stack since it is already empty but if not we will again convert it or typecast it to the byte array because we have defined our custom data structure which is the stack so after doing that now what we are going to do is we are going to change the whole array uh, so instead of like taking the whole array into account we are just taking the whole array except the last part so that's why length of s is minus one that is all of the array except the last element so now we are changing the array and also we are returning true because we have popped off something from the stack now if you look at the push operation that is very simple we are just appending the element to the array and we are simply doing the type casting business again on and off and apart from that we are simply just pushing the element onto the array so that is the push operation now let's go ahead and define is valid function first of all what i will do is that i will define the array of of pairs of brackets this opening bracket has a corresponding closing bracket the opening curly bracket has a corresponding closing curly bracket and similarly the square bracket has a corresponding closing bracket and we can simply add more pairs if needed for example if there are even like uh, different pairs for example let's say small a capital a in a question if that is asked we can even add those pairs here now what i will do is i will just iterate over all these brackets and i will create a counter mapping so the counter of the first closing bracket is the opening bracket similarly i will define that whether the first bracket of the pair is opening or not so you can see if we just look at the first bracket pair it is combination of opening and a closing bracket so the counter of the closing bracket is that opening bracket and similarly the very first part of this pair is an opening bracket so i will just mark that opening of bracket zero is true and these array arrays are simply byte byte mapping and a byte boolean mapping so our pairing is defined here now what i will do is that given the string s i will simply iterate over the string and there are two conditions in the string either the bracket is an opening bracket or it is a closing bracket so if it is an opening bracket i will just push it to the stack we don't care about anything else if it is not an opening bracket then it must mean that the bracket is a closing bracket so there are two cases here now if the stack is not empty and the top is and the top is actually counter of the current closing bracket then we can pop it off the stack so if you think about it when we are encountering a opening bracket we are pushing it to the stack and when we are encountering a closing bracket we are checking that the top of the stack is the corresponding closing bracket or not if it is the corresponding closing bracket we can pop it off the stack if not it means that the pairing is wrong currently so this is what i will do i will simply check the top of the stack and i will check that whether it is the counter of the closing bracket or not so simply put our stack keeps a track of all the opening brackets which need to be popped out and if you think about it in the end the condition is that the whole stack should be empty it means that all the opening brackets in the stack had found their corresponding closing brackets and hence they were popped out of the stack and note that we are not pushing the closing bracket onto the stack we are just pushing the opening bracket 
in the hopes of finding the corresponding closing bracket and if we find it we pop the opening bracket out of the stack so that is how we will pop the bracket from the stack and if not it means that like we encountered a weird condition and we will simply return a false in that case okay so i just tried compiling this program and there was a small error the error is that i should assign the stack to the pointer and not to the dereference pointer and not to the actual pointer which was a bit wrong and here also the ss is actually not defined properly so i will just do that and again assign the stack data structure to the dereference pointer s since i'm modifying the data structure that's why i'm dereferencing and referencing the pointer because i'm actually modifying the internal thing so now running the program you can see that it is accepted and it took a very small time which is 4 millisecond and it is working on all the test cases so in a way we implemented our own data structure a stack from the very scratch and then we tested it against this silly question to know whether the data structure is working fine or not and since this test case is passing we can be assured that our data structure is working fine if you enjoyed the video then please consider subscribing that will help me and encourage me to make more such videos in the future and soon i will be starting some live streams where i will be lead coding at night so if you are into that then follow me for that and yeah see you in the next one